Good morning and welcome to Peace Out. I put everything in the wrong spot. I don't know where anything is. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a good morning. I hope your mind isn't racing quite as fast as mine is this morning. My head has been all over the place and I, it's just kind of run its own little course, thinking through this, thinking through that, thinking through something else, and always coming back to, okay, God, I just need your wisdom. <laughs> I can't figure this all out by myself, right? It's not anything bad. It's just a bunch of stuff that's going on, or I just, I mean, I was thinking about work things and, and money things and taking care of Chris things and fixing the van things and, and, and you know, you, you got a list, right? Just think about your own list and, and then magnify it with a, a hyperactive brain that keeps running through everything, right? And just go, oh, I'm tired already. I need a second cup of coffee. <laughs> not really. Well, I do, but not really. Anyway, I hope you're having a good morning, though, and I hope you are, are learning to peace out. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. See, my, even in my reading this morning, I was kind of all over the place, and yet I wasn't. So here I was. I was in John, actually, and where I ended was in John 15, and Jesus says this in verse uh, 5. Yes, I am the vine. Jesus is the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me or stay connected to me, and I in them will produce much fruit. So I started thinking about that. I didn't read past that. You know, of course I read past that. He gave us peace and all this stuff because I was reading the 14 and 15, right? And so I'm, I'm like, hey, if we stay connected to God, if we stay connected to Jesus, then we're going to bear fruit. It's a natural process. And I thought, well, it's not, we're not going to bear natural fruit, though. We're not going to have apples and oranges, right, because we're connected with God. How do we stay connected with God? As a matter of fact, how do we stay in Christ? How do we stay connected to the vine? That would be through the Word would be through our prayer lives, through just pursuing, knowing him more, understanding him more, following him more, all of those things. Becoming a disciple, there you go, that's a novel idea. <laughs> we become his disciple. We, we read the word and it says something and then we just do it. It's not that hard of a process, right? It's just, that's just the way it is, right? And so I was thinking about that and I thought, well, but when he says when we stay in him, we're going to bear fruit, we have a list of fruit we're going to bear uh, or produce, I should say, in Galatians 5, it says, when the Holy Spirit controls your lives, you stay connected to God, you stay in Christ, you pursue Him, you become His disciple, right? Which is our goal in this life as believers, is to become a disciple of Christ, right? When we let Him control our lives, give Him our lives, let Him become Lord of our lives, it says, He will, He, He, He will produce this kind of fruit in us, Right? Love, joy, peace. There we are, right back at peace out, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those things will just come naturally. Now, I've said before, you've never walked by a tree and watched it strain to have fruit. You don't walk by a rose bush and, and hear it moaning and groaning and, and sweat and see it sweating trying to have a rose. The grow, rose grows naturally when the conditions are right, when there's the right amount of water, when it gets the right amount of sun, that just grows naturally. And when we start pursuing God and, and becoming disciples of this word, I'm really putting it in our hearts, this fruit is going to grow. It's going to be a kind of a supernatural byproduct because he's going to produce this fruit in us. So then I started thinking about it because I had just read a little bit. I was like, this is really good. If we stay in him, we're going to produce fruit, right? And then I thought of what a mess I am, <laughs> Right. Do I always have peace? No, I really don't. Things come at me just like they come at you. I have to stop and go back and get that. I have to stop and go back and different circumstances present themselves and different different situations come across. You know, I have different relationships, different things, you know, clients, all kinds of things come across my plate every day. And it's a choice to go back to God to look at Him from as my source. Right? And when I do that, then that peace comes easier. It comes more quickly. When I stay connected to him, I stay in his word. But did you know that the disciples, here's, here's what I love about the word. I can go back to this word and I can look at all these stories of people who trusted God. And it didn't mean they were exempt from trials. It didn't mean they were exempt from being thrown in fiery furnaces. It didn't mean they were exempt from, from being thrown into lion's den. It didn't mean they were exempt from, from their, their children passing like David lost a couple of sons, you know, in the story in the Samuel and Kings. 
you know, and, and well, think about those those things, and it didn't exempt them from life's circumstances. It didn't exempt them from hard trials. It didn't exempt them from the fires of life. But what I can do is look and see that God was with them, and then I can re- reiterate that to myself and remind myself that God was with them. Well, so as I was thinking about all this this morning, and I was thinking about how God is just with us, and and how when he when we realize he's with us and give him room in our lives and turn our focus to him we're going to produce fruit and it's just going to come naturally supernaturally right because it's not natural fruit but it's supernatural fruit right and then i thought because i had just read this passage about thomas in john 14 and this seems kind of disconnected but it's all the same thing in john john 14 and 15 are all red cuz jesus is talking right and jesus had just said don't be troubled john 14:1 That's a good scripture to memorize. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it is all he's saying, right? And he says, you trust God, now trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know where I am going and how to get there. Now listen to this. I love this. Thomas says, no, we don't know. (laughs) I love that. And you know what? Jesus didn't go, go get a different disciple, right? Thomas is going, we don't even know what you're talking about, Jesus. And Jesus didn't throw him away. I love that. Thomas was just honest with Jesus because Jesus is going, you know where I'm going and how to get there. And Thomas is like, no, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a huge enigma. It's, 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 It's clouded in my mind. I don't quite get it. Thomas said, we don't have any idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? And I'm sorry, but I love that because Thomas was just honest with Jesus. He was like, we don't even know what you're talking about. Because, see, sometimes we think we can't say what we're really thinking to God like he doesn't know. And I I just love that he was gut level honest. And he just, he was like, we don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. And if we get there, do we know how to get back? <laughs> he said, we, he, he was just so honest. And Jesus, that's what I love about it, is Jesus didn't just go, oh, you're an idiot. He didn't make any demeaning remarks. He didn't say, oh, my gosh, right? And then, he, and then Jesus says, I am the way. He just reached out to Thomas in that moment that Thomas was going, I don't even know what you're talking about. Have you ever read scriptures and gone, I don't know what he's talking about? God's not going to throw you away because you don't get it the first time you read it or the 10th time you read it or the 23rd time you read it right, or the 400th time you read it. God doesn't just throw you away because you didn't get it. Thomas goes, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. And Jesus is going, it's okay, Thomas. I am the way. And I, I found so much comfort in that because sometimes when, when I read the word, I have questions and God doesn't go, oh man, you got one too many questions, so... I don't know what you're going to do. He meets us right where we are. If we're, even when we doubt, even when we don't understand, even when we go, okay, I know you gave me peace, but I don't have a clue how to make it rain. He doesn't go, well, okay, find somebody else. Let's find somebody else. This this person just, no, he meets us right there, right? He meets, and, and then he, I just, I just really, I know this is a silly passage to go. It spoke to me, but it spoke to me of Jesus's patience and he's patient with us too. He's not just patient with these guys. He's patient. He waits till we get it. He waits till he goes. And then when we get, we go, Oh, I get it. That piece. And he goes, Oh, they got it finally. And it's like, he he doesn't throw us away then either. I just love this story that Thomas was so honest with God. And I'm telling you right now, you can be honest with God about how you feel. Even if you're mad at him, he already knows he already understands and he's already got a plan. To, get, to draw you closer to him. He's already got a plan because as we pursue him, as we just read in, in chapter 15, just pursuing him, look at these stories of people who trusted him before. Let that build faith in you. Let that build hope in you. Let it realize this little story here, these little three verses encouraged me, or uh, five verses this morning, encouraged me so much because Thomas was going, I don't even know what you're talking about, Jesus. And he'd been walking with him for three years and he didn't even know. And Jesus didn't throw him away. So we just got to keep hanging out with him, keep reading the word, 
Keep trusting him. Keep reading the stories of, of all of these people who have done it before to encourage our own selves to know that we can stand and we can trust even when we don't know, even when we think we don't know the way. Thomas knew the way. He just didn't know he knew it, right? But Jesus was right there with him, and that's why he could peace out. And when we read these stories, we know that God is still going to be with us no matter what, even if we doubt. He doesn't pack up and leave. He's got us covered. And when we keep trusting him, we will have that peace. We can peace out. Peace out. I hope I said something that made sense. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.